Welcome to Kingdom Mirrors TV. On this channel, we post edifying content for your spirit and daily living. Kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification to get notified each time we post. Thank you, stay blessed, and enjoy this video. Everything that left you that should not have left by the power of prophecy in the name of Jesus, I call it back. feeding us all through this year and i did not even tell her thank you you're having a retreat now lord forgive me don't feel condemned lord forgive me this year i allowed my children i don't even know where they got their school fees from it's only god that saved them they would have prostituted themselves i take responsibility a retreat is not the time to dance and ask god for more anointing you appraise yourself first after thanksgiving appraisal as a man of god did i teach koinonia the best that i could did i help the people did i manipulate the people did i teach them truth was i sound in scripture is there something about my teaching method i need to change as a ceo go for a retreat it doesn't matter that it's a secular corporation okay have i paid my people well we made so much gain this year did i share the honor did I increase their salary? Some of the pillars in my company, did I bless them or I just ignored everybody? I had all the profit alone as a CEO and the Holy Spirit tells you this is wrong. You need to change, motivate your people, encourage them. The security man who stopped armed robbers from killing you, he's still receiving 5,000 till now. You would have been dead, long dead. The man has a secret to all your office doors and all of that. And he's not touched one naira. You are still giving him 5,000. He told you his wife has given birth. You are still giving him 5,000. Retreat. That's where you flog it out. As a man of God, I need to improve on my teaching. There's a lot of spiritual laziness. No. I need to step up. Maybe I need to go and meet another man of God. Have some time of discussion. Let iron sharpen iron. You see that now? As a ministry, I think we need to move to the next level. Structural establishment. As a businessman, in the place, you are appraising yourself. We had potential to have five branches of my business, but laziness and carelessness and fear kept me in one place. This is what you do during a retreat. Any great man, whether in the secular or in the faith walk, who does not practice retreats can never be exceptional end of year retreats now generally speaking you shouldn't wait to, till the end of year before you do retreats you can fragment your life across various phases there are people who have retreats once every month they have retreats at strategic periods of their lives their birthdays their anniversaries but every believer as a kingdom culture one of the reasons why we give break, you can imagine, I told you already that a dear man of God confronted me one time and said, Apostle, you're an interesting person. How do you give a ministry this size break? What if you resume and nobody comes? You know, we give breaks for these kinds of reasons. To give you room because your relationship with God is greater than ministry. If you remain faithful koinonia people and you are going down spiritually, we are only playing games here. You know that, right? So this is you and God now. Spending time with God, spending time with family, spending time building your destiny. I want you built too, not just the ministry built. It is people who are built that can build the vision. You believe that? If a CEO goes to have two days with his directors or alone with god imagine what happens when he returns by january february that person would have surpassed ordinary standards now let me tell you the truth this is the reason why most africans do not thrive because we do not believe in this without trying to you know create any bias of regional biases one of the things that you learn from the west is that they they maximize moments like this they take the time they can travel somewhere to one village that nobody knows and you will see someone who is a multi-millionaire in a village somewhere just book an airbnb and sit down there asking serious questions these are the kind of people that jesus said they are not far from you know the kingdom because they are practicing all that is left is for them to be born again but as far as pro-kingdom principles are concerned they are working in it 
Let me challenge you for some of you. You have never had a retreat. Don't be too busy for a retreat. It's an attack. There are things God has wanted to tell you. He's been wanting to tell you for a long time. But maybe you're being a worker. You're being diligent as a worker will even distract you. The vicissitudes of life. Now in that silence, he can come to you and say, Since March, I've been wanting to point something to you. But you are too busy to hear. Now thank God you have given me time. And one direction from him. That leads me to the third. What do you do in a retreat? Number three, planning and resolutions for the next season. I hope, you, I hope I've not lost you. We're talking about retreats now. Go for an end of year, a personal retreat. What do you do in a retreat? Thanksgiving. What do you do in a retreat? An honest appraisal of the year. You appraise yourself. What do you do in a retreat? Planning and resolutions for the next season. Now you begin to plan. How much do I earn? How can I plan better? How, how do I need to, you know, work my spiritual life? I started this year as, you know, an ordinary staff. Now I've occupied a managerial position. I have to design a new spiritual formula for my remaining spiritually vibrant. This is where planning comes. You plan. What do you do in a retreat? You obtain the doing grace. There is a grace called the doing or the enabling grace. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's not enough to just plan. Most of you have your books full of things you plan to do this year. Some of you did not do even one. Don't end a retreat just by proper beautiful planning. No. Many are the devices in a man's heart. The Bible says, however, the counsel of the Lord alone, that shall stand. And when God gives you counsel, he also gives you the doing grace. The doing grace. When we started this year, there are many things that God gave us an instruction that we, do, we did not know at, as yet how they would be done. But glory be to God. Listening to him and obtaining that doing grace granted us the opportunity to do very great things for God this year let me recap again that a retreat is a time that is set about apart to be with the lord it's a time of renewal it's a time of refreshing it's a time to get direction for your life it's also a time of empowerment you are empowered by the spirit fresh anointing fresh grace you're a man of god for instance and you go for a retreat you'll be surprised what happens there you spend the two, three days, one week with the Lord. You come out like the eagle. Ready for next year. Ready with great fire. Ready with great grace. Hallelujah. Is it, it is at times like this that we receive prophetic words that direct the body of Christ towards the next season. You don't just sit down and guess what the prophetic word is. Um, which one have we used before? Okay, we have used a, a shining year. If we now say the year that um, what looks like what people would like, you are playing games. You will not see any performance because God is not a joker. It's in the secret place. As you are stretching, praying, his voice comes. This is what I want to do to the people. And you receive it for yourself. Then you announce it. In Koinonia, 31st December, 6 p.m. West African time on the dot, all through our social media platforms, the prophetic word for the next year is released and that's what guides us we walk based on times and seasons and there are people who don't believe in prophetic words for the year there's nothing wrong you know it's just the revelation how god has given them but as a ministry and as a global family god has so chosen by his wisdom to guide us giving us prophetic words for the year that become a compass because we walk in this world based on the law of times and seasons and god is not doing everything all the time are we together so go for a retreat say i receive grace one more time say i receive grace to go for a retreat let me plead with friends and families and spouses commit yourself to helping one another have that retreat don't just say a spouse wants to go for a retreat. You start shouting, the Bible says, what God has joined. Mm -mm. Explain, discuss, and say, and you as a spouse, don't just leave and nobody knows you have gone. They think you are missing. And then after one week, you say, ah, 
should I not be about my father's business? That was Jesus, not Mary and not Joseph. Hallelujah. When you are going for a retreat, we live an e in evil times. Let your loved ones know where you are going so that they know you are safe. They know the difference between a kidnap and a retreat. Don't put people under stress because you are alone with God. Because there are people who will hear messages like this and say, my own starts from this night. They won't go back home now. And their loved ones will be looking for them for a long time. Church people are very interesting people. It's good to obey instructions. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Shout a loud amen. amen. So when you have people around your life, don't ignore them. Let them know, okay, I'll be going for a retreat from this day to that day. This is where I'll be by God's grace. If you call me and I don't pick, don't, don't worry. I'm safe. I'm fine. I'll be spending this time with the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together? Go for a retreat, oh, in the name of Jesus. Please go for a retreat. I'm challenging you. This, this is, a, is a secret that has helped some of us. I don't know how my life would have been today without retreats. Give God time and you will hear him in a way that will surprise you. Give God time and he will give you direction. One direction that comes from that secret place will redefine the next 10 years of your life. Carry all your pain. Carry all your confusion. Carry all your burdens. Carry everything to him. Cry before him and let him give you direction. Let him give you help. Are you ready for number five? The fifth prophetic instruction. Share the love of Jesus with everyone around you. Share the love of Jesus. I said this one time and I'm repeating myself again. Share the love of Jesus. There are two ways according to scripture that we share the love of Jesus. One, by the preaching of the gospel. Number two, by giving. Please write it down. The two ways that we preach the gospel or that we share the love of Jesus. In preaching and in giving. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. It says therein is the glove of God revealed in preaching. When you preach and when you give, you give people an opportunity to know Jesus. Please look up. Every believer in Christ is first a child of God, but number two is an ambassador of the kingdom. Are we together? And as kingdom ambassadors, we have a responsibility to see to it that the kingdom that we so lovingly represent is known to all men, especially the king of that kingdom. Don't allow the year to waste without someone knowing Jesus in and through your life. Don't allow the year waste without someone finding Jesus. Share the love of Jesus with everyone around you in giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Say giving. Some of you like preaching. The preaching part, you were smiling. You had giving your mother said, Apostle, don't say it. I will say it. <laughs> Preaching and giving. What do you give? Everything that can make people's lives better. Advice. You know, this world's goods, like the Bible says. Let me challenge you. Organize a small welfare for someone in your little community. There are people within your community. Some of them, some of these people, they don't even know where they will get a meal from. If you can buy one bag of rice, 60,000, or how, I think I'm right, whatever amount it is, you put it in small bags, you meet them and tell them, well, I'm here to share the love of Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Or you can buy something for the children. You can set two days to do a Bible study program for children just to help them know the Lord. You don't need to have the name of any ministry. Are we together now? Yes. Or you can decide to just take a hundred thousand, send ten, ten thousand to ten strategic families that you know love the Lord and may not have capacity to, and just tell them with love from Jesus. What a beautiful way to share the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
make sure that you share the love of Jesus with someone. Share it with children. Share it with your family members. Share it with friends. Share it with all kinds of people. Let them know that you are a Christian. Let them know you are a child of God. Don't watch people go to hell and say, I don't care. I will mind my own business. If they reject your proposal about Jesus, that's fine. At least give them a chance. That should be true for children. Some of you may send some welfare material, perhaps to a school somewhere, and just tell them this is with love. This is just to show you that I love you. Everything we do for Jesus, I want you to know that it will be rewarded in this life and in the life to come. Do you believe that? Yes. Some of you may want to decide to bless maybe the security people in your office. You just make up your mind that I will give all these people, I will buy one bag of rice and divide it and just call all of them. Don't just give people, say, take, take. No, it's not about giving. It's about helping them to feel the love. Say something before you give. Are we together? Yes. Let it not just be about money or bags of rice or groceries or whatever it is. No. Tell them something about Jesus. And that includes non-Christians. I hope you know you, you know that. That includes non-Christians. Go and gather some children. Doesn't matter what faith, what religion. Share the love of Jesus with them. Help them. Perhaps your company can decide as a seed to take a day and give a 50% discount on whatever it is that you do. And boldly tell them I'm doing this as a love seed from Jesus. Amazing. Do it. Sometimes it's not always about giving money. You can also ease the burden for someone. Are we together now? I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. One more time. I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Hallelujah. Someone must know Jesus because you were born. Someone must know Jesus. Utilize this time. Don't let the year end without bringing one soul to Jesus. It's a lie if you tell me there's nobody to be saved. I don't believe you. Everybody that is unsaved according to scripture is called a harvest. It's already a harvest. And I've taught you here in God's mind, the problem that God has is not the harvest, it's the laborers. The harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. Some of you show kindness, but preach directly to someone for God's sake. Sit with someone and start talking to him about his life. I just want to share a few thoughts with you about life and destiny. Do you mind? And the person says, all right, that's fine. And you talk to the person. Let me tell you, today you see me as a great man, but let me tell you a little story. It was not always like this. Don't just walk to people and say, who are you? You are going to hell. No, don't. don't. I mean, come on. You, you are giving creativity. Don't harass people. They will take you to court. Yes, sir. We live in a time where people are very right conscious. Don't go and put yourself in trouble. No, there are, are very loving ways of introducing conversations that, you know, culminate in salvation. Tell them about your life. You feel inspired by my life. Let me tell you a little story. It wasn't always like this. I came from perhaps a dysfunctional family. You can use your pain. Every man's pain is his point of contact. Are we together? You go and you see a bereaved family 